After understanding the types of businesses that you're going to be investing in on crowdfunding portals, it's next important to understand the types of deals that you can invest in, or the deal terms. Today, we're going to be talking about two critical things for investors. First, what deal terms are and the different types that you'll see. And second, what the types of financial securities are that you'll be able to invest in as a crowdfund investor, whether that's equity, debt, safes, hybrid offerings, convertible notes, and many more. This is Brian, founder of Crowdwise. Let's get into it. Welcome to lesson two of the level two module two investor courses. Today, we're gonna to be talking about regulation crowdfunding offering types and deal terms. Make sure you stick around until the end because we'll be discussing which types of investments and securities are suitable for investors looking to maximize financial returns, as well as which deal terms and offerings you should be looking out for. When you see the word financial securities, do you know what that means? Essentially, a financial security is just a financial instrument or an asset that represents the right to receive future benefits under a set of stated conditions. Typically, we can classify financial securities in three high-level categories. That is equity, debt, and derivatives. In addition, there are obviously different hybrid combinations of these, such as convertible bonds, which are a combination of debt that pays interest, but then also a convertible option that converts to equity. Some examples of equity include common stock, preferred stock, home equity, and security tokens that are equity. Different types of debt may include bonds, such as corporate, government, etc., money market instruments, and then also debt security tokens. And lastly, what do we mean by derivatives? It's things such as futures, options, swaps, and forwards, or in the private markets, things like safes and SAFs that we'll get into next. So when we talk about regulation crowdfunding and regulation a securities, what are the different types that you'll expect to see on the funding portals and platforms? Under equity, you'll expect to see common stock, preferred stock, as well as LLC membership units Essentially, membership units are similar to stock in a corporation. Also, security tokens, specifically talking about equity tokens. Now, under debt instruments that you'll see in equity crowdfunding, there are interest notes, revenue sharing notes, and security tokens, which are a form of debt. As an example, debt payable by assets, or DPAs. And lastly, for some of the derivative securities, you'll see SAFES, which is a simple agreement for future equity, or SAFs, which is a simple agreement for future tokens. And of course, there are hybrid securities, such as convertible notes, which combine both debt and equity, as well as SAFDs, which are tokens plus equity. Overall, just remember that offerings are still evolving in the equity crowdfunding industry and will continue to change in the coming years. So here's the thing that all investors should know about debt securities. First, remember that regardless of the type of security that's being offered, startup failure rates are always going to be very high. As we've seen in past courses, angel investing studies suggest anywhere from 52 to 70% of startups fail to return 1x the capital. Assuming 70% fail, that means that the 30% of your successful investments have to follow power law returns in order for your early stage overall investment portfolio to have positive returns. Because of this, debt securities, which have a limited potential upside, should generally be avoided for investors looking to maximize financial gains. Debt securities are best suited for investors that aren't looking to maximize financial gains in their startup portfolio. Now, there are some exceptions, such as uncapped revenue share notes, which don't limit the upside. Let's go through an example of a debt investment to show exactly what we mean. Let's assume an investor is building a startup portfolio. They have 100,000 net worth, so they decide to allocate 5% or 5,000 to startups. They decide to target roughly 20 startups to start. So if you took that 5,000 and divide it by the 20 investments, that's an average of $250 that they'll invest in each startup. Now let's assume a 70% failure rate. That means that 14 of their 20 investments will fail to return at least 1x the invested capital. This investor wants to target an internal rate of return of 20% over the next eight years. Thus, as we've shown from our past IRR course, a 20% IRR over eight years 
and then having only 30% of the investments succeed, since the other 70% fail, means that they would need to return an average of 14.3x each. That's the average return multiple on each of the six successful exits. Now think about this in terms of a debt note. Even revenue sharing notes, which often cap the payback multiple at a total of 1.5 to 3x, wouldn't allow this investor to achieve their targeted portfolio returns. Here at Crowdwise, we primarily focus on the equity and the derivatives such as safe and convertible note securities. Tokens will also be covered in our level three advanced investor courses. Going back to the Reg CF and Reg A plus securities, the ones that financial investors should focus on are primarily those equity, the derivatives, and the hybrids. Let's now dive in deeper to each one of these to understand common terms. Before we do, let's take a quick look at the current regulation crowdfunding statistics. How many of each of these are offered? We took a look at roughly five platforms in terms of regulation crowdfunding raises, and here's what we found. Roughly 15% were offered via convertible notes, 30% were common share equity, 38% were safes, and then roughly 6.3% were preferred equity, with 11.3% being non-voting equity, which that was primarily Start Engine's Series CF preferred shares. Also, we can take a look at this distribution by the platforms that we looked at. As you can see, some of the funding portals, such as Republic, focus just on a single financial security, the SAFE in Republic's example, while others, such as Start Engine and WeFunder, have more diverse security offerings. It's interesting to note that out of all 81 deals that we looked at at this time, only one of those was a debt security, which was a revenue sharing note. Thus, the issuers, or the businesses raising the money, seem to understand that offering debt deals as a startup is typically not desirable by investors. Let's now look at a quick matrix that gives an overview of the different types of securities. First, we'll start with common stock. Common stock is actual equity ownership in a business, and it does typically give voting rights. However, because equity crowdfunding investors will typically be classified as a minority shareholder because they're investing such small amounts, these voting rights are usually delegated in the deal terms to a proxy, such as a CEO. Now, common stock will not typically come with liquidation preference, which we'll be discussing more in the coming slides, and also usually doesn't have interest or dividends. The key terms for common stock are relatively simple. You just have your price per share, and then investors would look to see if there are any voting rights and who they are delegated to, and then if there are any transfer restriction rights. Comparing this with preferred stock, we can see preferred stock is also equity ownership in a company. However, preferred stock does not usually have any voting rights. The trade-off for this is because preferred stocks usually held by outside investors, there are usually liquidation preferences. We'll be talking about what that means. In terms of interest and dividends, while preferred stock has a higher claim in terms of receiving dividend payments, it's still very rare for an early stage company to pay dividends. So most preferred stock that I have seen personally on funding portals have not offered dividends thus far. Key terms are price per share again, voting rights and transfer rights. And those other terms to look out for include looking at what the liquidation preferences are and what the conversion terms are. Next, we move on to a convertible note. The first difference to notice here is that a convertible note is not actual equity ownership in the company. Because of that, don't expect voting rights, and also they don't usually come with liquidation preferences. However, convertible notes, as we will show, do include an interest payment on that note with a maturity date. Thus, the key deal terms for convertible notes include the interest rate, the conversion cap and discount rate, and a maturity date upon which that interest is due. Other terms to look for are repurchase rights, which we will be discussing more in the coming slides, as well as conversion terms. Last but not least, there's the SAFE, the Simple Agreement for Future Equity. This is essentially a convertible note, only there's no interest or dividends. If there's anything to take away from this lesson today, it's that you should always read and review the offering form or Form C filing or the offering circular for each investment as what we are covering are only guidelines and typical and will always vary deal to deal. Just a quick note, as we discussed last time in terms of tax implications of LLCs versus C corporations.
An LLC will issue membership units or interests, while C corporations offer shares or stock. LLC units can still either be classified as common or preferred though, similar to the stock in a corporation. You should understand that being an LLC does not indicate whether the business is taxed as a partnership or a corporation. You should still contact the founder or look in the Q&A section of the campaign page to see if they mention anything about sending out Schedule K-1s or being taxed as a corporation. Now, let's get into each of these crowdfunding securities in a bit more detail. We'll start with the equity of common and preferred. Common versus preferred shares are offered at a price per share. For example, let's say it's $2 per share. Now, this is similar to holding the stock of a public company and that you own actual equity and that comes with all the potential future gains or losses that that business experiences. Common shares are the type that founders and employees typically hold, while preferred are more common for outside investors. The reason is that preferred shares will typically include additional protections for investors, such as liquidation preferences. Common shares, as we mentioned, are typically the type held by founders and employees, but are still offered to investors. Common shares would typically include voting rights, however, because crowdfunding investors are much smaller and sometimes called minority shareholders, these rights are typically delegated to a proxy, such as the CEO. Key terms to review include what those voting rights in that delegation are, as well as transfer or resale restrictions. Some example terms for a common share offering would be a price per share, for example $1, let's say the pre-money valuation is set at $5 million, it might have a minimum investment limit of $100 for each investor, with a minimum offering target of $10,000, and a maximum offering of $1.07 million. Thus, if you want to calculate what your equity would be, you need to figure out the post-money valuation. Post-money valuation is simply the pre-money valuation plus all the investments from the current round. If only the minimum offering limit was met, that would be a 5.01 million post money valuation. Thus, if you invested $100 in that, your ownership would be 0.002%. Compare that where if that business achieves the maximum offering of 1.07 million. Now, all the money going in would make a post money valuation of 6.07 million. And thus, if you still only invested $100, your equity ownership would be a little less at 0.0016%. This shows that how successful a business is in a given campaign can impact your equity ownership at the end when calculating post-money valuation. Next, let's discuss preferred shares. Preferred shares are the type that's typically held by outside investors. Voting rights, again, typically not, but especially in crowdfunding, even if there were voting rights, they would probably be delegated via a proxy. The primary difference between preferred and common shares is that preferred shares will usually have a liquidation preference. What this means is that in a liquidation, such as a sale or a bankruptcy, preferred shareholders have a greater claim on assets than common shareholders. This essentially means they would be paid first. Preferred shareholders typically have the option. They have the option to either convert to common shares and be paid out accordingly with the common shareholders or receive their liquidation preference. In the situation where the company is doing well and is sold for a lot more money, Investors will probably want to convert to common shares and get paid out with common shareholders. However, if the business isn't doing well and is sold for a loss, you probably don't want to convert to common shares and instead will receive your liquidation preference to be paid out in advance of the common shareholders such as founders. However, don't expect much, if anything, in bankruptcy. Preferred shareholders, despite being ahead of common shareholders, are still after creditors in the liquidation waterfall and thus typically won't receive anything, or just cents on the dollar. Other terms not as common in crowdfunding, but common with preferred shares for angel or VC deals, may include call options, protective provisions, which allows preferred shareholders to veto or block certain actions by the majority common shareholders, anti-dilution terms, and more. These are good to be aware of, but again, they are very uncommon or probably won't be seen at all on many crowdfunding deals. So the question for investors is, common or preferred, which one should I invest in? The takeaway is that since small crowdfund investors, also called minority shareholders, 
typically have their voting rights delegated anyway on any common shares, either type of stock is generally acceptable for a crowdfunding investor. Usually, it will come down to a preference of the platform or the intermediary that the issuer is raising on. Next, let's get into convertible notes. A convertible note, as we mentioned, is a hybrid of both debt and future equity. It pays debt-like interest until a liquidity event, such as an IPO or an acquisition, triggers that conversion into equity, or until the maturity date is reached, whichever happens first. Key terms in convertible notes are the interest rate, for example, if it pays 6% interest, maturity date, for example, 24 months, is the point at which repayment must occur if it hasn't already converted to equity. Conversion discount, which is essentially a discount rate applied at the time of conversion. And a conversion cap, for example, $10 million valuation cap, which is a cap on the max valuation at the time of conversion. We'll discuss an example of how conversion discounts and cap rates come into play when we get to the safes. Other terms to review for convertible notes include no voting rights, remember, the note is not actual equity. And also, conversion can be either to common or preferred shares. And typically, in crowdfunding deals, you'll see it called shadow series, i.e. non-voting, or other similar terms. This essentially means it has similar terms to the preferred shares that other investors, such as angels or VCs, may get, only it won't have voting rights because you're a minority shareholder. An example of deal terms would be a convertible note with 6% interest, a 24-month maturity, a 20% discount rate, and a 10 million valuation cap. It's important to remember that liquidity events are what triggers the conversion to equity of a convertible note. And at that time, it converts the principal amount of the note plus all accrued interest. So if you invested $100 and it had a 6% interest on your convertible note, at the time of conversion, the full amount converted to equity would include that interest payment. Reason that convertible notes are typically used is that it's usually easier and less expensive for startups. It's different from a common or preferred stock in that it's not a priced round. Thus, a formal current valuation is not assigned to the business, and instead it's the valuation cap and the discount rate. This can save startups both time and money. However, a potential drawback is that the debt obligations from all the interest on the convertible notes and the maturity dates can become the straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak, for struggling startups. Thus, Y Combinator invented something called the SAFE, the Simple Agreement for Future Equity, to address this potential drawback. A SAFE, also called a crowd safe on some of the funding portals, is a simple agreement for future equity. It's similar to a convertible note, only it doesn't have an interest rate or a maturity date. It was invented by Y Combinator in 2013 as a better option for founders and thus also for investors. Their rationale is that if an investor is looking for, say, 4% or 6% interest, there are far less risky alternatives for investing and getting those interest rates rather than investing in high-risk startups, where, as we've already shown, failure rates can range from 50 to 70%. Thus, taking away the interest payment gives early stage startups the best possible chance at finding product market fit without adding excess debt. It essentially extends their runway as long as possible to give them a chance. It assumes that early stage investors are investing primarily for large capital gains, not dividends, as we mentioned. And so, the terms of a safe are pretty simple. It has a discount rate, for example, 20%, an evaluation cap, for example, $5 million. For the most part, that is it, but some other terms can include repurchase rights, most favorable investor clauses, delegation, and then conversion at either pre- or post-money. We'll talk about what each of these means now. So some special clauses that you may see in safes are repurchase rights. As we'll show, these are not typically desirable for an investor. The reason is that some venture capital firms don't want a messy cap table that has many investors. Thus, some safes are designed to have the option where the startup can repurchase safes from investors prior to conversion, essentially buying out their early investors before raising capital at a later round. 
While terms typically will require the investors to be paid fair market value and will still likely result in gains, these gains are probably more in the order of 2 to 3x multiples. And think about if you'd been bought out of Facebook early on, you would have missed out on all the real gains that didn't happen until much later. Think about the types of business that would want to exercise these repurchase rights. If a business isn't doing well, then they wouldn't exercise these rights from their investors. However, if a business is doing fantastic and wants to raise more capital from VC, that would be a time when they may exercise these rights, and that's the least desirable time that investors would want to be bought out of their early investment. Next, there's something called the Most Favored Investor Clause. This is something that's recently been offered by WeFunder. So instead of a discount or valuation cap, WeFunder has introduced this Most Favored Investor Clause. It's similar to an MFN, Most Favored Nation Clause, in angel contracts. And essentially, it states, you get the best deal terms of any subsequent investor. There's no valuation cap or discount rate. Instead, it's kicking the can down the road and giving early investors the best deal terms of anyone else that comes in later. Also, some safes will have conversion deferral options. All that this means is that they may allow the startup to defer the conversion to equity, even after what would typically be a liquidity event of a standard safe. This gives startups and founders the most flexibility. There may be other amendment clauses or delegation rights to also look out for. For example, some clauses may allow a lead investor to amend the terms of the safe in the future. If this is present, you should at least understand who those rights are being delegated to and what the likely outcome would be in such a situation. Let's run through an example of what a safe conversion would look like. Let's assume you invested $500 in a safe with the following terms. It has a 5 million valuation cap on the safe at a 20% discount rate and repurchase rights. The safe converts at the more favorable of either the valuation cap or the discount rate. So let's run through two different scenarios to see how it would work. First, in example one, let's assume the next round is a series A at a 10 million post money valuation. Let's say $2 a share. Using the discount rate on your safe of 20%, we can calculate the discount would give an effective valuation of 8 million. However, the valuation cap on your safe was 5 million. Thus, because the 5 million valuation cap is lower than the valuation from the discount rate, this valuation cap would be used to calculate your equity during conversion. Instead of the Series A price paying $2 per share for an equivalent $500 investment, which would only net them 250 shares, you would essentially get double the number of shares because of your valuation cap. In the second example, let's assume instead of a Series A, the company isn't doing as well, but they decide to raise a priced post-seed round at a 6 million valuation. Discount rate method would calculate to be 80% times the 6 million valuation for 4.8 million total, whereas the valuation cap is still 5. In this scenario, since the discount rate gives you a better deal in the valuation, this is what would be used to calculate your equity. In the end, your shares would convert as if it was a 4.8 million instead of 6 million valuation. All regulation crowdfunding offerings will have some terms that are identical and required. They are a minimum offering amount. For example, many have a minimum offering amount of $10,000. A maximum offering amount, which can go all the way up to 1.07 million. A minimum investment, which is typically in the $100 to $500 range, but can be as low as $10. A campaign deadline, which is when the minimum target must either be achieved by or else the campaign will be canceled and funds will be returned to investors. And then resale restrictions. Now, what do we mean by resale restrictions? Under regulation crowdfunding, the SEC imposes restrictions on resale. They state that securities purchased in a crowdfunding transaction generally cannot be resold for a period of one year unless the securities are transferred, one, to the original issuer, which is the business that was raising funds, two, to an accredited investor, three, as part of an offering registered with the commission, or four, to a member of the family or a trust as identified here. 
There are also some other common angel terms that you may hear, which may or may not come up in equity crowdfunding deals. First, some terms that are rare or non-existent in equity crowdfunding will be pro rata or preemptive rights. This is essentially what allows angels to do follow-on investments. It allows investors the option to maintain their pro rata percentage of equity ownership in later rounds. So if they owned, say, 1% of a company and that business is now raising a Series A, they would have the option, but not the obligation, to invest more money during that Series A at the higher price to maintain 1% equity ownership. Since most crowdfunding investors are investing much smaller amounts, you won't have pro rata or preemptive rights. Typical thresholds are 25000 for pro rata on some of the funding portals today. Also, as we've mentioned, you won't have voting rights. Even common shares, which typically have voting rights, will have those rights delegated to a proxy, such as the CEO. And lastly, protective provisions. These are provisions where preferred shareholders may have the ability to veto or block certain actions by majority or common shareholders. But again, with hundreds and sometimes even thousands of investors on a cap table, it wouldn't be wise for founders to allow all their crowdfunding investors to be able to block or veto certain decisions. Other common angel terms to be aware of, which you may see, include drag-along rights, which essentially protects major shareholders in the event that they identify a buyer and are willing to sell a stake to the company, it doesn't let smaller shareholders block that sale, and the opposite of that, which are tag-along rights, which protect the minor shareholders, where if a major shareholder finds a buyer, the minor shareholders are able to participate at the same price. Remember, all the terms we've discussed today are still not the exhaustive list of all the deal terms out there. You'll become more familiar with deal terms as you start screening your first deals. Just a recap of what we discussed at the beginning, here's the matrix showing some of the differences between common and preferred stock as well as convertible notes and safes. So let's recap everything we've covered today. We discussed, for investors looking to maximize financial returns, they should avoid debt-based investments. There are lower risk alternatives to be able to achieve single digit interest returns. Thus, for financial investors investing in equity crowdfunding, it's best to invest in the equity, convertible notes, and safe deals. As we discussed, the most common forms of equity-based securities on crowdfunding portals today are common shares, preferred shares, safes, and convertible notes. Always make sure you read the specific deal terms for each investment you make. Especially when starting out and looking across each funding portal, deal terms will vary. So far in Module 2, we've covered the who, the types of businesses on equity crowdfunding portals, and now the what, the deal terms and offering types. Next lesson, we'll be getting to the where. That is, what are intermediaries and why investors should learn the differences between a broker-dealer and a funding portal. We'll discuss what the top regulation crowdfunding funding portals, aka websites, are today in 2019. We'll provide an overview of a funding portal summary, comparing differences in some of the top funding portals, such as what their fees are, what their deal flow looks like, how they perform due diligence, and more. And lastly, we'll touch on something called intrastate crowdfunding. Thank you again for joining us here in Lesson 2. If you haven't already, head over to academy.crowdwise.org to create your free account. Also, make sure you follow us on social, and if you haven't, hit the button to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get all the latest lessons and other weekly tips that we release via video. This is Brian from Crowdwise. Thank you very much for spending your time with us today.